Hello and welcome to the Sir Exmouth Ceramic Group online exhibition Fragile Earth and Other Pots. Pour yourself a glass of wine and enjoy. I've made four pieces for the exhibition Fragile Earth which I think would be suitable. Three of the pieces are made from smooth crank, which is more resistant to the frost. This piece has melted glass in the base with speckled oatmeal on the seal. This piece has black iron oxide for the colour on the penguins, melted glass in the base and I've turned it into a number plaque. This piece has blue grey glaze on the back. It's a glaze that I had at home and used and I think it, it worked out quite suitable. This piece is made from white grogged porcelain. It has black underglaze on the penguins and melted glass in the base. All of these pieces are fired to stoneware temperature. This is a big bowl that I made about a year ago and it's, I can't believe it's taken me so long to finish. Um, I, it was supposed to be more vertical than this and going out at the top but it collapsed in the process of being made and I nursed it back to health and it's a coil pot um, and I couldn't decide what, how to glaze it so finally found some glazes that I liked and it is now anthracite with rustic gold in the rim. Um, I'm reasonably pleased with it um, so that's all I have to say really. This is a little thrown porcelain pot um, I like the finish of it it's turned at the bottom and it's not glazed on the outside but it's glazed on the inside as you can see and it's got little toasty bits in various places which I do like. These are the mice, not rats, one of my first attempt in the first term in the ceramics class. The whiskers were made by pull, pulling clay through a garlic press. Hope you like them. Bye. Hello, so I haven't done a piece for the exhibition theme this year because we've been a bit busy. I wanted to show you this piece because it's probably the one I'm most proud of. Um, I've got Cocker Spaniels, I've bred and shown Cocker Spaniels for most of my adult life and I absolutely adore them. So this was a special piece I wanted to make. I made it with Raku clay because Raku tends to be more robust to 
be manipulated around when you're sculpting something. And Raku works wonderfully because you can get this lovely crackle white glaze as the base and it naturally makes the, um, the black. So a lovely piece. And then I had my first black and white cocker spaniel. So I made this one. Um, there wasn't any Raku firing going on at the time. So I used matte black and matte white glaze to make her. And as you can see, there we are, there she is. And there she is in miniature. So very pleased with that one and particularly pleased with that one. Thank you. So it's finished. I had an air freshener that diffused mist and decided to make a little round house. It's made up of earthenware, hand painted and carved to make a little it into a little thatched cottage. The smoke comes out of the chimney. I have made other holes, but it seems like the smoke's doing what it's supposed to do. Also lights up at night. And yeah, I finished it yesterday and my mum and dad love it. Um, can't say much else about that. I think I'm quite happy with it too. This is my run. It's my fourth attempt to get it to run from the pump to the pond. It's stoneware, red green glaze, cobalt oxide, manganese oxide and black iron oxide. I'm quite pleased with it this time. Wind blasted tree in stoneware with oxide and the water is glass with stain in it to make it look like water. These are seals by Joy Davis, Potty Joy. They are made with white stoneware clay They've had porcelain slip pulled on them to act as icebergs to um, emphasise the melting of our icebergs and how we need to protect our oceans. They have then been bisfired, bubble glazed and had decals attached to them of various different plant life and um, short sea reefs coral, octopuses, things like that. This is a bowl I made this year. It's made of black clay and with white porcelain slip. I glazed it with clear glaze and blue cobalt glaze. I like the way that my inadequacy in glazing has offered up a variety of textures within the, the glaze mixture. I think it represents the fragility of the Earth's surface and fits very well into the exhibition brief. Hello, this is Sarah. This is half of my entry for the Fragile Earth exhibition. It's an internal doorstop. The other one was to be a long-eared or eagle owl, which was completed and left to dry in the pottery in March. This one is a lion, um, done after one of those Victorian cast iron ones, made with raku clay, started with a cylinder, which I then altered to make a flat back. And then added bits of underglaze. I then glazed it with the earthenware honey glaze, which I like, and I poured over deliberately to get this non-even effect. So that's it. But if you're short of exhibits for the exhibition, I've just got a few here from my collection of bits, mostly made from odds of clay of endangered species. Bye. This is Rachel Halpin's work, one of our students. 
she has done a post-apocalyptic London where it's all flooded and just bits sticking out the top. Um, it will be flooded and fired with with uh, glass in so that it looks like it's underwater. Excellent work on her big bin. She's used nichrome for the London wheel and pasta to do the lettering. It looks very cool. I particularly like Battersea Power Station. Well done, Rachel. Hi, my name's Steve Taylor. Um, this is my Fragile Earth piece, which is, I suppose, a multimedia piece, really. Um, and I wanted to demonstrate how badly man has treated the earth and how it's probably too late now to pull things back. Um, it's um, created under lockdown and it's rather cruder than I intended. Um, the frame has been built by me using an ordinary frame um, for a picture which I've turned into a box frame by attaching some timber to the back. Um, I'd like to have used an ornate gold leaf frame as a, um, a big um, uh, sort of um, contrast to the starkness of the statement on the actual um, piece. Um, I took some clay and I mixed it with earth from the ground and then I've fired it in the sun because I don't have access to a kiln and um, mounted it on a backboard with the barbed wire to sort of um, and, uh, imply how harshly we treated the earth and and um, it's probably too late now to get in and rectify the problems that we created. And the backdrop is articles from the papers to give a literal demonstration of what's gone wrong and how we're heading for disaster. It's not an uplifting work and it's rather depressing really, but uh, the fact it was made under lockdown sort of intensifies its significance. Um, the other piece I've done, um, which I call Scaredy Cat. Um, firstly, don't tell my wife that I put it on the dining table. Um, which is a sort of a, a skeletal cat form, um, which is animated to represent um, an animal that's scared. Um, as you can see from its face, it's got a sort of face of an, a worried old man, really. Um, and he's wondering, is this the end? Um, I don't know whether it will f it fire very well. It's not fired at the moment, and I think it might all fall apart, but uh, there you go. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, despite these representations, um, I'm not quite suicidal yet. Um, but I think it is time for us all to reconsider it and reflect upon uh, what we're doing to the earth and maybe change our lifestyle. So there we are. Good luck. So I wanted to end on a more cheerful note. These lovely sculptures were made by the children in the after school club at Brixington Primary Academy. And here is their gorgeous work on endangered species. I thought it would be fun to have my guinea pigs come and interact with them. But they're not playing ball. <laughs> So we have a koala, a lion, an elephant, a panda, a blue whale, a beautiful curled up sleeping blue mouse, a little octopus, another elephant, and I believe this is a comedy mouse. So the girls are now going to come in and get their food, I think. 
these are my guinea pigs. They're mainly rehomes. But to me, they're a work of art.